But are we ready to do whatever, whatever it takes to get there? From my side, I'm not sure I'm ready to, to cut my addiction to oil because I don't know how to make my clothes, I don't know how to make my food, and I don't know how to make my transportation. I don't want to walk to the Wisher Fest next, uh, next year. So um, this is a solution, but the problem is uh, this is a, a, a long-term solution. But the short term, we, need, uh, we have other problems that we need to solve, and it, the first one is how to get affordable food. Organic food without pesticides is already expensive enough. If we need to bring this to everybody else, it's going to be very, very expensive. So for the moment, transition is going to be painful. How do we give up on transportation? We don't have 99% uh, of cars run on oil, so this is not a solution either for the moment. And how do we replace plastics? We're completely addicted to packaging, and uh, we've been taking more from the ground than we've been giving back. So uh, for the last 60 years, we've been taking, uh, generating more plastic than we've been able to recover, and it has given us this, landscapes and oceans full, full of plastics. So, and even if we had solutions for that, uh, this is not enough. Solutions are useful when people adopt them. So the next challenge is not only finding solutions, but how do we find ways for people to take action, to adopt all of these kind of solutions. So, yeah, this is the job for MacGyver. <laughs> only a guy who can solve things with a shoestring and chocolate wrapper can do this. But uh, maybe there are two other ways that we, can, uh, that we can find to do this in an easier way, path. So the first one is the uh, circular economy. Who doesn't know circular economy here? Okay. So doesn't. So uh, for, for those who don't know it, uh, now, right now we're living in a linear economy uh, where we extract things, we produce them, we consume them, and they end up becoming waste. Uh, the circular economy, so we're taking more than we give. It, we're taking more than we give back. The circular economy is: you take, you you produce, you consume. But once you're over with it, instead of turning it into waste, you turn you either give it back to the earth as a nourishing element, or you reuse it for another product. So this is uh, one of the paths to regenerate our our nature and society. So one of the examples is uh, Ecovati, for example, they're doing uh, packaging out of mushrooms. So once you're done with the packaging, instead of becoming waste, you throw it in the garden and it becomes compost. So it becomes nourishing. Uh, another example is uh, active disassembly. Uh, this is, these are bolts made of smart materials. Uh, when you heat them up, they lose the threads and uh, you, can, you can open a device much, more, much faster. So imagine you had 100 TVs, you have to disassemble them, you just heat them up and you can pop them over and recover all, the, all of the materials very quickly instead of losing hundreds of man hours in doing it. But the circular economy is also not enough. Um, as I said, we need to adopt these solutions in a very big scale to make, uh, to make it worth it. So the second thing we need is uh, open source. And what, uh, what is open source? Uh, open source is uh, you, you, have, you have the right to study, to modify, to, uh, to improve, and to sell uh, an idea, an innovation, a design, or whatever. So the examples everybody knows are WordPress, that's powering 25% of the websites we have, Linux, that's powering mo most of the internet, Bitcoin, that's valued at more, that's more than $1 billion, Wikipedia, that has overgrown the Encyclopedia Brit Britannica in a few years, just with a, with a team of volunteers. So if we mix the circular economy and the open source, uh, this is, these are some examples. Uh, the shower loop is a shower that reuses uh, the, s the water you're using during your shower. And thanks to it, you can use 10 times less water and 10 times less energy. Uh, so once it spreads over, uh, all the whole society can uh, reduce its impact the water impact. Another great project is A-Forest. They're reforesting India. Um, the guy is a former employee from Toyota who mixed uh, permaculture with Toyotism. And uh, he, m he found ways to regrow forests in three years instead of 30 years. And now he's, uh, this is being picked up in the States and in the Netherlands to, regr to regrow desertified areas. Another great project is uh, Precious Plastics. This is a, a machine that's open source as well. 
uh, where you can put all of the plastic packaging that you have around in your house or in the ocean or wherever, put it in the machine and get a, a plastic filament to that you can reuse to make new, produ new products. And where I'm hopeful that um, this is uh, being a right idea also for traditional companies is that they are st starting to pick up on the idea. Tesla is open sourcing all of their patents to, to grow the mar their electric market, electric vehicle market much faster by allowing other manufacturers to, to get access to their infrastructure. Adidas uh, has open sourced uh, some of the sustainable shoe development to the, to the athletes so they can develop it with the community and spread it faster as well in, in conjunction with the needs. And Levis just open sourced uh, their water treatment processes so uh, the dyes that normally were toxic now they've found a way to, to treat them and they're sharing, ser sharing it with the rest of the industry so they, uh, it can spread uh, faster. We can cut all on pollution, just not Levis. And some of the questions uh, from the user side, whoops, yeah, uh, some of the questions uh, from the user side is, opens if everything is open source, will I have to do everything myself? Uh, if I need a new toaster, will it look like this? And uh, the benefit of open source is, of course, do it yourself, but sometimes uh, open s um, things are too, too, you need special skills, you need machinery, or uh, it's not just not uh, convenient to make something in a very small scale because it's very expensive. So the other benefits uh, are transparency, security, and diversity. By transparency, the benefit is that uh, if something is open source, you can prevent price fixing and monopolies. So this is, uh, this is pretty advantageous. Um, and it allows other people to create an ecosystem on top of which everyone can, uh, can innovate, uh, can create their own solution for their own needs. So if you have a solution in one place but it doesn't fit your local needs, you can make a, an adaptation. And for security, you can also, uh, you can also prevent uh, people inserting uh, security flaws or durability flaws like planned obsolescence into the design of your product. So, yeah. Um, and the second question, more from the company side, is uh, how do we prevent others from ripping off my project? If anyone has access to my ideas, uh, yeah, how can I prevent them from copying me? And this is not possible. Uh, to be, if you're open, you're open, and anybody can copy you. And actually, even if you're closed, everybody can copy you. Steve Jobs was, was very good at that. He kept copying people with patents. And IP protection, the only thing that it does is destroys value by preventing other people to, to reuse knowledge. And companies don't make money by destroying value. They make money by creating value. And one example of this is also Arduino. Arduino is uh, this cardboard, uh, this electronic uh, card that uh, you can use to, to create any sort of electronic innovation. So people have created the first open source 3D printers that have been at the beginning of the 3D printer revolution. And uh, other people have played with prosthetics to plug them to your brain and make them move uh, to your stimulus. So Arduino with this has made a huge library of innovations of top of their initial innovation, but this attracts more people to them. So the better question instead of how can I make money if anyone can copy me is how can I capture some of the value that I'm creating? And uh, three of the ways that I've found are, the first one is you need to solve a pain 10 times better, so make something 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, or 10 times easier. Uh, once you've done that, you grow a community of contributors, people who can build on top of what you've done and create uh, and, and solve new needs. And, the th and you don't need a million contributors. You, with a few meaningful ones, you can, ex you can innovate faster than any of the close competition. And the third one, e even if you have the two other elements, you need to, to sell a great service and a great product. Otherwise, anyone can copy you by just improving what you're doing. So by doing things uh, in an open source way, is um, traditional companies, this is not to say that traditional companies are not great in creating great innovations uh, that help the world. But, and that's not also to say that open source is all we need. Uh, but it's, it's uh, maybe unwise to put all our, all our hopes in, uh, in traditional companies 
designing products that are in harmony with nature and uh, society just by themselves and spreading it at the speed that nature and society needs. So, um, um, so the real question here, so, sorry. So the real question here is, um, do we care enough about our present generations and our future generations to start designing everything in a circular way and sharing it open source so it can spread as fast as the internet uh, to regenerate the, the, the planet as fast as we're consuming it. So after all, we have been doing it, uh, we are doing it, and we could do it. So with that said, thank you. <laughs>